Welcome back to our Eurohouse channel. Всім привіт! Ласкаво просимо на наш канал Дім Євробачення. So today we are having an uh, interview with beautiful, gorgeous, uh, awesome girls from the from the duo Aya. And uh, how are you feeling right now? Thank, Thank you, you so much. Us. We're doing good. How about you? Also really fine. This is the last day of the week, so I'm feeling a little bit tired, but really happy yeah. to see you here with us. So we have a lot of questions to discuss uh, this time, and I hope it will be interesting for both of us. with the, the meaning of your dual name, Heya, uh, how uh, to pronounce it rightly and what does it mean? Okay, so it's pronounced Heya and that's actually the Icelandic way of pronouncing it because it, it is an Icelandic word and it means island. Um, so that's like the meaning, but our meaning, like the meaning that we we created, like the deeper meaning is that it's kind of like our little island that we've created throughout like our whole lives because we've been best friends since we were like since we were born pretty much and we've done everything together our whole lives and basically our island is our music and our friendship so that's why we're called Aya. So you are best friends? Yes, you are not sisters. We are sisters. We are sisters, uh, but yes, we're... You are sisters because it was like you are best friends, so why is a little bit Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've always <laughs> we've always been best friends too, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Your duo was formed in Iceland, but right now you based in Denmark, if I'm not mistaken. At least yeah. uh, uh, Google writes uh, this information. So can you yeah. explain us uh, why and uh, how did it happen? Well, uh, our parents are Icelandic and our whole family, so we have an Icelandic background. Mm -hmm. But they moved to Denmark when she was only two months old, so I was born in Denmark. Yeah. And then we've basically just been raised in Denmark and we've moved yeah. a little bit from country to country, but we always end up in Denmark again. And this is where we finished our school and have our friends and work and everything. So we feel at home here. And mm -hmm. then we're also signed to a Danish label. So, yeah. So you feel yourself uh, as a Danish group, yes? Yes. Yeah. How did you decide to go to a Dance Melody Grand Prix? And uh, why did you choose Dance Melody Grand Prix over Icelandic uh, selection? Because if I'm not mistaken, one of you was at the Icelandic selection in 2020. To be honest, yeah. I, did, I don't remember who exactly, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, so why did you choose Dance Melody Grand Prix? Well, again, it's the thing with, I mean, we are raised in Denmark and Denmark is actually where we feel most home. Um, so that's why we chose the Danish one. And and in I think it was in 2020, I did the national final for Iceland. And I mean, we've never really lived there. So I just thought that could be an opportunity. I was only like 15 when I sent in my song. So then I was just like, yeah, let's just try to see if I can like get in. And then I got in and I thought, why not? Like just try to connect with my Icelandic roots. Um, but the difference is from that one and the Danish one is that we feel more like I don't know, at, at home, pretty much what we were saying. Like and in Iceland, I felt kind of like the new girl, like I don't know anybody and never really lived there and stuff. But in Denmark, it's just our home. Like we know everyone and this is where we feel like safe and, and good. Yeah. And how we got in to, well, our label actually sent us, like they, they emailed us and sent us this song that is I was going to marry him, our song. And just like, listen to this song. What do you think? Um, could Would you want to like represent Denmark maybe with this song in the Dansk Melody Conflict? Yeah. And then, yeah, we, we fell in love with the song and we 100% wanted to try to at least get into the Dansk Melody Conflict. And then we, we got, got the in. news that we got in and it's, yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah. So if you started talking about this song, can you tell us the meaning of this song, which is the main message? And as I understood, you are not the authors of this song, yes? Like your label. 
Yes, we oh. have. There are three Danish songwriters who wrote it, but we got the chance when we heard it, we loved it, and then we got the chance to change some parts in the lyrics and then made it ours. Yeah, yeah. and the song, the message of the song is singing about something that is so relatable for many people. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's about being left alone and you had all these plans for the future with a person, but all of a sudden this person leaves you or something happens. You're just left alone and all your plans just disappear and you have to build yourself up again. Mm -hmm. And I think many people have experienced something like this in their life. And our message to that we want to inspire people with is that even though as hard as it can be, and you feel like you're in this dark tunnel, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel and you will always get through it much stronger. Yeah. And that's, also the deeper meaning for us is that we've gone through everything together so together we are stronger through this pain that we we've gone through and that's what we want to inspire other people. who supported you the most uh, who supported your journey to dance melody grand prix the most maybe your friends family or someone else and maybe you have some interesting stories with this yeah um, well i think definitely our mom she's always been our biggest supporter i mean she was when i was in the icelandic one um we didn't have like a label or manager or anything so she was just you know the manager and everything she was doing everything uh for me and she was there every step of the way and basically she's doing that now as well and we're really lucky to have our label as well we're signed to universal music in denmark and they are like we have the greatest team and they're like going with us to every interview everything um so they've really been supportive yeah and i think we're also we're also very lucky to have supportive parents both our mom and dad support us so much Mm -hmm. and i think without them we couldn't have been where we are today for sure not (laughs) what can you tell us about the preparation for the national selection the final uh what stuff are you working on these days like right now can you tell us more about this Yeah, well, I mean, there's so many exciting things happening right now. We're just in full, like, rehearsal mode, um, getting, like, our outfits ready for the show, getting the whole, like, image, the visuals, and the whole performance part, actually. So we're just rehearsing, doing a lot of interviews, and preparing ourselves for the big show. (laughs) And maybe you have some, like insights which is not a secret uh, i don't know and what can you tell us about the stage and if you if you know some details uh, so some secrets if it's not a secret actually uh, we would like to hear it yeah well and one thing in the way that the song is built is that we're gonna start off in sadness and you don't know where to go from there and the more the song gets to the end the stronger we become and yeah so it's like the story of like being so fragile and vulnerable and being you know your future is ripped away from you yeah so you're basically starting there and then you it just builds up this strength because with time um strength comes along and you really get stronger at the end so that's what our staging like her whole performance is going to be about and then obviously the song is called i was going to marry him so could be some hints in that title <laughs> Uh, that's really cool to have a story in your stage, and so I think I'm sure that it will help you. Out. The next question is uh, about Eurovision. Like, imagine that you won the national selection, and if you go to uh, Liverpool, uh, what will be your main meaning, like your main message for viewers in, Re- in Liverpool? Wow, I mean, our message that we really want to bring out, we want to inspire people. That's the most important message, and also because we are so young. We also want to show people that like age does not matter. And if you never give up, if you keep on working in any age, like you can get there if you really want to. Yeah. And it would, I mean, it would be the biggest thing ever to actually go to Liverpool. So yeah. we're hoping for the best. Um, but if we would go to Liverpool, I mean, we would just really like prove all these, like all these young people as well. Like you can do this like, yeah. for real. And most importantly, just have the experience of a lifetime. Uh, did you listen? Did you listen to any of other songs of Dance Melody Grand Prix? And if so, uh, what is your favorite one? Well, we listen to them all. I mean, they're all so different. I, personally, I love all of the songs because they're so different in a way that like, it's hard to like compare it. In a yeah, way. it's really hard because they're yeah. And everybody is super nice this year and talented. So 
I couldn't pick a favorite. I'm just no. excited to see everyone's performance. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, kind of you, I can say. Uh, so, uh, Eurovision fans have not decided the quality of the songs. Uh, the Danish selection has uh, like got worse last years, and in response to this, uh, the Danish broadcast uh, promised to change the rules for the selection of participants. So, what do you think about this, and uh, how was the uh, like this process of selection of artists that will go uh, through the selection to the final? Well, I think I mean. I don't think like we weren't so much in like the whole process of like um, ha like how you get picked and stuff because we only know from like our point of view that we talked to our label and then we sent in that song. So we did it like in collaboration with them. For us, it was, I mean, we didn't really get like the whole view on how everyone's everyone gets selected i think it's actually no. different yeah and i think they're really trying to pick like extremely different songs to, to showcase other yeah to maybe things. see like oh just get an insight of how it really works like what people actually want to see and because yeah. it's it's so different every year i feel like yeah but i do feel like this year is a strong selection yeah for very sure. and uh, right now you're the first one to win uh, Dance Melody Great Grand Prix by odds. And uh, does it mean for you something? And do you follow the odds? Yeah, we've seen a lot of things on Twitter and uh, YouTube and all these polls. Actually, our dad is sending us like, oh, look at this. <laughs> and we think it's crazy that people are actually voting for us because we we didn't know what to expect with the mm -hmm. with the song. Actually, first, we we're just like, this is so different, but we love it. Like, But we weren't really sure what people were going to think. So it's huge the way people are reacting to it online and yeah, I think I think it makes it like more realistic for us that this is actually going to happen because yeah. when we when we sent in the song and we got to know that we were in, we didn't really I don't think we any of us thought like okay, think a lot to the future or we're going to be in Liverpool and stuff like that. We didn't have any expectations like that, but now definitely seeing all these things it's getting so real for us and that it might actually happen, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, the support for you is really crazy by fans. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, you are also one of my favorites of this selection, so I wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's talk uh, about the Eurovision in general. So are you a Eurovision fans? And if so, uh, what is your favorite Danish and Ukrainian songs in Eurovision? We, we've watched Eurovision like all our lives, I think since we were little, we have so many memories watching it with our whole family. Um, it's hard, honestly, to pick a favorite. We're always like, "What? Which one is your favorite?" It's so hard to pick. I mean, for sure, one of our favorite Danish songs is "Emily the Forest." Only teardrops. Yeah, that one is really like. I remember that one. I loved it when I was like seven years old. Yeah, but it's hard to pick um, another favorite. That's just one I really remember. I loved when I was younger. Yes, and Emily the Forest has the song which is really Danish, like the first association with the song is Denmark. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And what about Ukrainian? Can you name one? Oh, I actually don't remember any no. Ukrainian right now. I have to go like look at all the names. Yeah, there are so many songs, like I mix it together. Uh, yeah. Oh. We'll definitely look it up after. <laughs> so, and I think you heard the song from last year's Winners, Carlos Orchestra. Uh, what yeah. do you think about this and what is your opinion about this song? Well, my first reaction to it was like, it's kind of, it feels kind of unique in a way. Mm -hmm. I liked it. It was, it was really nice. Yeah, I think it was, it was really strong. It had, had like a mysterious feeling to it. Yeah. Uh, and also if you're a Euro fan, say, I hope you watched the last year's show. Mm -hmm. And if you remember the participants, can you name your top three of all? Of last year, actually, last year when when there was Eurovision, we were oh, yeah. we were in LA, so yeah. we couldn't really watch it. No, we just watched back a few YouTube videos and the winner and stuff. So we did yeah. we did watch the Ukrainian song, but I don't remember so many of the other ones. I remember the Danish one, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> and what do you think about the Danish one? The, uh, the group Ready, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Yeah, yeah the one that when. It, went last year to the yes, yeah, yeah. I, th I think it was pretty cool how she like started on the piano and then it got like a little 
more upbeat. Yeah, definitely. I thought that was pretty cool and different. You are sister, as you uh, stated before. So how did you understand that you are interested in, interested in music and you want to sing to make music and to like mix it all in your head? Yeah, well, we we have really uh, like our family loves music yes. from both sides, mom and dad's side. We all it's a really musical family, musical family. Yeah. And we all almost sing and play instruments. And I think when we were younger, we just immediately wanted to sing and loved that. So we did that before we could even speak. Yeah. I mean, our mom, I guess she just saw like that we were always dancing and singing to every song. So she, I guess she just saw the passion. And then we went to a music kindergarten. So she drove us there every morning. And then from there on out, we just, we just always kept singing and writing songs. And then yeah. we went to uh, music schools and piano lessons, guitar singing lessons. And we did that all together. Yeah. So I feel like, cause we did everything together. We just formed this kind of musical bond together as well. Like we like all the same things. And Yeah. And I don't think it was ever the plan or we didn't expect to create a duo together. Mm -hmm. We it just kind of happened. We never had that thought, but it happened and it makes so much sense to us and it just feels much better to be together. Yeah. Uh, and have you had some thoughts about going to Icelandic uh, selection like in duo? Uh, have you had some thoughts? No. Actually, no. I feel like after I did the Icelandic one and now uh, we're in the Danish one, I feel like the Danish one is just where we belong. It's hard to explain, but I just feel like, I mean, we have Icelandic rules. We love Iceland. Like we have grandparents there, um, but we would like to represent Denmark for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's cool. And uh, also the question about your work, like uh, singing and artist is your main work uh, or job or you have like another one? Well, I'm actually a songwriting and live performance teacher in Amsterdam and Paris. I went to an old music school in Amsterdam and then right now I'm teaching there actually. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And otherwise we're actually babysitters. So we're also a family with eight kids. So we love kids as well. So that's yeah. A lot. And, then, that's a lot. and yeah. we still, we still go to school online. So yeah. Yeah. Um, can you describe yourselves in one word? Just pick one word, a word that can perfectly descri describe yourself. Okay. I would say ambitious for me. I would say spontaneous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and why exactly spontaneous? I just, I I don't really like to plan things. I just like to no. jump into it yeah. like one minute before. Okay, let's do it. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's do this. I mean, I'm also like that. I think that works also well with like also the music industry and everything. Everything's just like, oh, you want to do this? Like tonight or like go to this interview tomorrow morning like it's very you have to be flexible in that yeah one. and i like to, i like to keep myself excited so yeah yeah you're a little bit the same with me because i have uh the same character so uh ah. what is your dream collaboration with a worldwide famous artist maybe you have some oh yeah, yeah. we have many i i would love to do a song with a male artist at some mm -hmm. point i really like John Legend, Sam Smith, or Justin Bieber. We we really yeah. love him. Or Ed Sheeran or Lauf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We really love them as male. And then female would be Maisie Peters. Mimi um, Webb, maybe? Mimi Webb, also we love. So, But there's so many good ones. <laughs> I hope your dreams will come true. And, uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, who knows, who knows? We'll see. And right now, yeah. I have a little challenge for you too. So mm -hmm. you have okay. one and a half minutes to name as much countries that won your revision at least once as you can. Are you ready to do this? Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll tell how, you my how many countries? As uh, many. Uh, like as as much as you can. Okay. It, it doesn't depend. So I'll turn on my timer right now. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So one, two, three. Come on. France, Ukraine, Italy, Denmark, it, Sweden, Israel, uh, Ukraine. Did you say that? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Ireland, the Sweden, Netherlands, Sweden. Sweden. Okay. okay. Norway. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've lost. Switzerland. I don't know. Oh, oh, yes. oh! Uh, Austria. 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 Awesome. Uh, Germany. 
<laughs> what else? Uh, I can give you uh, an advice. It is the yeah. country uh, which is not participating uh, is not participating right now in Eurovision. It has the red flag, the red flag, the red flag, with the moon. China. China? China, China Eurovision. <laughs> I hope you really understood me. To name 15 countries, something about this, really, I didn't remember. And I will just count the record when I will be. Okay. Able to do the video. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I think we named a lot, I think. Yes, you named a lot, exactly. At the start, I was like, <laughs> oh my God, what is going on? So that's really cool. And uh, at the final, like the final note of my interview, uh, can you sing your song a little bit live, like for our viewers? Yeah. He ran away. He ran away. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be with him, but he wanted to see the world. Begged him to stay. Begged him to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was gonna marry him. Okay. Well, we want to say. Thank you for all your support. If any of you out there are loving our song. We appreciate everything and we hope the best for you at Eurovision and hope to see some of you guys hopefully in the final. Yeah, we're so excited to perform on stage and hope you want to watch it and, and yeah, hopefully inspire as many of you. And you're stronger on the other side and there is light at the end of the tunnel.